and thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. What? Oh, cheers. Um, uh, no, no, no. I'm just, just dressed nice, isn't it? <laughs> People ask me where I got my coat from. It's actually from China, but they delivered to my house, which is convenient because I didn't have to go to China. <laughs> so yeah, hello, my name's Tom, I'm from Salford. For those of you who don't know, Salford's kind of like the parasitic twin of Manchester. There's this saying in Salford which is, give us your fucking wallet. <laughs> now there's this saying in Salford which is, an apple a day, what the fuck's an apple? Now, there's this saying in Salford, which is, um, you can take the boy out of Salford, but you won't get far due to the ankle tag. Um, I, actually, I actually got uh, mugged in my hometown, and um, mugging's one of those things where you don't know how you're going to be until you're actually in that situation. So, like, before I got mugged, I thought that I'd be like, a, here's my wallet, here's my stuff, leave me alone. But it turns out, upon getting mugged, I turned into a gobby little shit. <laughs> These three guys came towards me and they went, do you have, a, do you have the That's time That's a on really you? good question. And I was like, two o'clock, mate. Like, it was a lie. And he went, I don't think it is two o'clock. Can you check on your phone? And what they're actually doing is they're seeing if your stuff's worth pinching. So I had a look and I was like, two o'clock. And he went, no, it's not. And I went, are you clairvoyant? <laughs> and I swear to God, he went, who the fuck's clairvoyant? <laughs> so I spent the next few minutes telling him what clairvoyancy was. <laughs> and that did not go down well. He went, do you know who we are? And I went, I'm not an adoption agency. I couldn't give a fuck. He went, look, if you don't know who we are, then just give us your stuff. And I went, look, guys, it's free, you and one of me. You've not beaten me up or intimidated me yet. At least work for this mugging. <laughs> then they beat me up and took my stuff. They left me with my silver coat, which I was annoyed about, because the... <laughs> the coat's fabulous. Um, and I swear I got right, the next week, I was in a different part of town, and this guy came up to me and he went, you got any money on you? And I went, you should have been here last week. <laughs> so, what about like a phone and that? I, went, I got like this shit one from the insurance company. I went, I've got this coat. He went, I don't want your coat. Makes you look like a jacket potato. <laughs> or someone who is too fat to finish a marathon. <laughs> so I said to him, right, I ain't got no money on me. Let's be honest, this here is a £20 mugging at best. <laughs> you might be better off looking elsewhere. And he looked me up and down, and without missing a beat, he went, I think you're right there, kid. <laughs> On your way. Um, I quite like telly. Do you like telly? No. What? <laughs> Pretty popular, generally. I love watching quiz shows. I love watching the Crystal Maze. Best bit is the bit at the end where they go, do you want to trade a crystal to get your friend out? And they go... Is Janice driving us home? <laughs> in that case, no. No, we do not. Caused all sorts of issues in the 90s. Office managers everywhere just going, all right, guys, gather around. I'm sure you've all read the memo. Janice is still stuck in Aztec zone. <laughs> and we're in no rush to get her back. 
There's like a quiz show that I don't like, right? It's called Tipping Point. Oh, yeah, it's shit, innit? It should be re renamed What's the Fucking Point. <laughs> I don't know how it got commissioned unless it was like five to five on a Friday. And they were going, oh, we've still got four o'clock on ITV. Like, what are we going to do? And they went, I'll be honest with you, this week I've spent a lot of time in Blackpool <laughs> on the 2P machines watching a shit rap show. <laughs> Let's turn that into a quiz. I'm not convinced. We've already got Ben Shepherd attached. Ben Shepherd, the man with all the personality of a fucking flannel. Fuck it, get it made. <laughs> There's one other one that I don't like, right? It's called uh, Take Me Out, right? It's, it's shit, in it, right? The stuff that Paddy McGuinness comes out with. Let the boar see the peep. Let the clam see the pearl. Worst one I ever heard him say was, let the chicken see the nugget. Because <laughs> if a chicken did see a nugget, it wouldn't be turned on. <laughs> be horrified. Just be going, Kenneth, where's Kenneth gone? What's this gold thing? I've just fell over. <laughs> um, I love watching trashy telly as well. Like, you know, everyone's got like a drug of choice. Like, mine's like shit telly. And much like regular drugs, it's got your entry level. It's got your Jeremy Kyle. It's got all that sort of shit. Right? But I've moved on now. Right? I can only really enjoy the stuff the Americans pump out. Best one, well, one of my favourite ones is called To Catch a Predator. Oh, is there some fans in? You a fan? You a fan? You got a favourite pedo? <laughs> right, for those of you who don't know, right, it's this show where they go online and they talk to, un they come, they say that they're underage boys and girls and they talk to uh, predatory paedophiles and they go, come round the house, there's no one in. But what there is, is uh, hidden cameras everywhere and they give them an interview on national telly. And it's fucking gripping. Brilliant, right? Best episode, there's a guy who gets caught trying to groom a young girl into performing sex acts on a cat. <laughs> and it's, it's fucking, right? So the host goes, sit down. Fucking sit down. Do you think that this is a correct way to talk to an underage girl? Right? Well, I've got, got news for you, mate. It gets worse. Got the chat log here of what you said to the cat. <laughs> This cat here says that he's only two years old. That's underage even in cat years, you sick fuck. <laughs> There's another one that I love, right, called My Strange Addiction. People with weird addiction. Oh, you're a fan over there? You got a favourite episode? Oh, the woman who likes eating furniture. That episode is shit. <laughs> Fucking brilliant, right? Best episode... There's a woman who's addicted to eating her dead husband's ashes. Whoa, do not judge till you've tried. Well, I'm not saying try that. That's not what I'm saying right there. Right? But I swear to God, she sat there with this urn on her lap, right? She takes the lid off, licks her finger, puts it in the urn like a morbid sherbet dib dab. Licks her finger clean. Then looks up at the camera and goes, I need help. <laughs> There's not much of him left. <laughs> I think I'm coming towards the end of my time with you guys. So I'm just going to tell you this final story, right? Um, me and my dad used to like uh, bond over TV. Um, and my dad got very uh, poorly about 18 months ago. And he, yeah, no, he's, it was, right? And he, he ended up, like, like being so poorly that he passed away, right? Uh, it's, well, yeah, it's, it's oh, cheers, mate. Uh, <laughs> but, right, um, we were in hospital, and um, I don't know if you know this, but in hospitals now, they have these top-up TV cards where you put money on them, and you can watch TV. And I think it's disgusting. You fucking... 
It is. It's a waste of money. It might as well be a scandal in a few years' time, in my opinion, because you're essentially you're taxing people for being unwell and bored in hospital, and that's fucking disgusting, right? Right? What was that, sir? Get onto watchdog. Well, mate, if this video goes viral, who knows? Right? But I remember, right? I bought him like like ten pounds worth on this top up TV card and he slept through it all. <laughs> and I'd never been more annoyed at him in my life. I was like, I know you're unwell, mate, but fucking come on. <laughs> right? I remember this happened, right? This was before we knew that he was gonna that he was gonna die in hospital, right? We were all around his bed, we were visiting him. And, you know, like, it was just like a regular visit. And the person on the bed next to him died. And there was no one there. Like, yeah, like, it was, it was dead fucking quiet and tense. And, like, doctors and nurses noticed. And they went in and they pulled the curtains to. And Porter's body bags started going in. And it was, it was really fucking tense. It was tense and it was quiet like this room is. It was, it was dead tense, right? All right. They pulled the curtains back to and the bed had been remade, and it was as if it had never happened. And again, it was very tense. But my mum broke that tension by going, he's still got two days left on his telecard. <laughs> Jim, get in his bed. He doesn't need it anymore. You guys have been lovely. I've been Tom Shaw. Have a great night. Catch you in a bit.